Life. Death. Aquariums. Fish. Er, heaters. As fish keepers, we are all too familiar with these elements, especially heaters. They fill us with happiness, respect, excitement, and other positive emotions. In this video, we are going to be looking at the incredible lives, or the average lives, I should say, of fish in my aquarium. Anyway, I'm done with this intro now. Here's some credits with reviews fading in and out in a dramatic style while some nice music plays over it. Enjoy. Now, let us go down to their level. A beautiful, natural, and just peaceful environment for these fish to live in. Marvellous. Absolutely marvellous. What we have here is an aquarium. My aquarium, to be specific, for to be that word that I cannot pronounce right now. Ah, the marble angel fish. A fine specimen indeed. Found in South America, this species of cichlid is one of the most widely sold aquarium fish. Preferring warmer waters and a mainly insect-based diet, this fish has swam its way into many a hobbyist's heart. Just an absolutely incredible fish. Here, let us watch this stunning fish in action, with some appropriate background music of course. To the untrained eye, this may look like an incredibly stupid behaviour, and in fact, that would be completely ironic, as they would be the ones stupid, not the angelfish. As the angelfish is merely battling his reflection for dominance of the aquarium. I mean, if you looked this good, you would battle your reflection too. Oh, but wait, you'll never have that problem, now will you? Meanwhile, the angelfish will continue his eternal battle, like the mighty waves battle the shore, he never surrenders. The albino rainbow shark, a fish not related to the actual cool sharks of the world, like the great white or tiger shark, but it is still interesting nonetheless, just significantly less cool. But there is an upside, because it is called a shark, if you are okay with lying, you can still trick your less intelligent friends into thinking you actually have a pet shark, when in reality you have a bottom feeder, which is much more like a pleck than a shark, but they will never know that, will they? This not shark species will spend most of its time foraging the gravel and plants of the aquarium, searching for something to eat, but it will not find it, because there has been no food in the aquarium today. I still need to feed, but it will continue. 
like a mighty ship sailing the ocean blue, looking for the treasures of old. He will keep searching until the end of time. One similarity the sharks do share with their cool cousins is that they are indeed a solitary creature. You cannot keep these with other shark species like the red-tailed black shark, which I have also owned, and sadly he is no longer with us, RIP. Or bala sharks, or other rainbow sharks, really, they will not get along at all. So keep that in mind when you're buying them. And also, remember, pet shops can lie and tell you you can keep two of them together, when in fact you can't, because all that will happen is they will fight continuously, and you'll end up with a very, <coughs> very battered and sad smaller rainbow shark. So, do keep that in mind. Now... Let us watch this little shark explore his tank with appropriate music. When most people think of gouramis, they think of the beautiful blue gourami, or how about the real red gourami, or even the giant gourami. But the gourami I have, which actually isn't a gourami, it's related to the gourami, but anyway, the gourami I have is a fierce, predatory gourami. One that is named after one of the great big cats of the wild. The cat of South Africa, the amazing, vicious and deadly leopard bushfish. Dangerous, aggressive, these are just some of the words used to describe this ferocious predator. Just look as the other fish flee before it, knowing their fate if they remain. Spending most of its time hiding in caves and in dark places of the tank, it waits to ambush anything unfortunate enough to come across its path. There is nothing small enough to fit in its mouth at this time. Soon though, soon it will grow and it will devour this entire tank if I am not careful. They must be watched at all times for fear they will attack. So how dangerous are leopard bushfish? Well, even other leopard bushfish fear leopard bushfish. That is how dangerous they are. And now, let us appreciate this savage creature with appropriate music. Some people may disagree that bloodworms cannot be kept as an aquarium pet. I, however, believe they make a fine addition to any tank. I mean, look how excited my fish are to greet their new companions. Now, when keeping bloodworms, the temperature of the tank must be... Uh, oh. Oh my. Well, that didn't work, did it? Moving swiftly along. It is now feeding time in the aquarium and all the fish become slightly insane for a short period of time. During the feeding though, let us turn our attention away from the interesting fish and towards this piece of cucumber. Now, we have to wait for the cucumber's natural predator before we can see what is truly amazing about this piece of cucumber and the bond it shares with its predator. Ah, and here he is now, the common pleco a fish with an insatiable appetite. The pleco slowly approaches the cucumber, trying not to be spotted by its prey, and then strikes. Poise, elegance, dignity, 
all these are words I would never use to describe what a common pleco is like when it's feeding. Now, let us watch him feed with appropriate music, of course. Just like our own human society, in the fish world there will be some who are nice and kind and helpful and you can have meaningful debates with that will enlighten both of you by the end of it. Take these five banded barbs for an example. Lovely fish, they would not bother anyone with petty arguments, they would merely offer a helping hand when it is needed. Or how about these rummy nosed tetras? Surely, if they ever got into an argument, they would just turn it into a discussion, and each side would benefit from it, learning from the other. Or even these rainbow shiners. They understand the very morals of humanity. Truly, these are fish we all must live by. We all must aspire to achieve their greatness. And then, you will have some that are just pr Here we have two angelfish, locked in a deadly verbal debate. Lucy believes leaving the EU is in the best interest of Britain, whilst Oscar thinks remaining is a smarter decision. However, rather than portraying their points accurately and giving reliable information, they prefer just to insult one another and call each other's mothers fat. This, in the end, solves absolutely nothing, and the two forget about the issue within a couple of days and move on to more pressing matters. Such as, okay, I'll be honest, no one cares. Nobody cares. Even if they weren't fish, no one would care. I can promise you that. Now, let us move on. The aquarium is truly an amazing thing to behold. Nothing on this earth compares to the relaxing sensation of just sitting and staring at it with no woes and no worries just enjoying the beauty of it it is truly an amazing experience and one I hope you will all one day feel we have not been able to stay here too long it is time for us to say goodbye and leave this trapped ocean the fish say goodnight to one another praying to the almighty hand god that it delivers them beautiful delicious food tomorrow thank you all so much for watching this quote unquote documentary i do hope you all have enjoyed it and now i must say goodbye to you all and wish you all a great day i will see you all in the next quote unquote documentary or the next video, or whatever. Goodbye, and have a great day.